Welcome to the Health Runner Podcast. My name is Uriel Kaim, New York Times bestselling author, former professional athlete, and founder of Health Preneur, the world's leading company helping health and fitness experts start and scale high-end coaching businesses. If you want to attract more clients, learn how to convert them without feeling salesy, and deliver an amazing program for them on the back end, if you want to be inspired by what others just like you have gone through and how you can do the same no matter what life throws your way, then you are in the right place. Because every single week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going to be bringing you the best to help you take your knowledge and expertise to the next level with your health or fitness coaching business. And if you enjoy what you see and hear and would like to take your business to the next level, then I invite you to check out our free online training over at healthpreneurgroup.com forward slash training. And for now, let's get into today's episode. What's going on, guys? Uh, Welcome to this episode. I'm just going to adjust my camera here so I'm a little bit more centered. Uh, If you're listening to this on the podcast, it doesn't really matter because you can't see this. Anyways, I want to share with you guys in this episode uh, my number one productivity hack. Love that word hack, right? Like ninja hacks and tips. and We all love those like new shiny things. Anyways, I want to share... Uh, The number one thing that's made the biggest difference, I think, in my productivity, and I want you to start doing this if you're not already, and I want to give you a bit of context about this. So if you're watching this or listening to this right now, um, this isn't live, just so you know. I'm actually in San Diego running our Luminaries Mastermind over the next couple days, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's terrific. It's just so much fun. Anyways, so a lot of people... I understand that not everyone works at the same cadence and the same pace. Not everyone can handle a ton of stuff and deadlines and so forth. Um, But I want to really encourage you to reconsider that because that is a belief, I believe. I work very well under pressure. I don't know if that's maybe who I am by nature. Um, But it's also a force of practice and a force of maybe not having a choice sometimes. I was uh, at Healthpreneur Live in September. We had this... Uh, the session called the procrastination solution and I was sharing nine ideas or nine strategies really to beat procrastination and I say like I mean listen like I kind of I, I can kind of talk to that because I told them I, I kind of wrote the book on procrastination because when I was in university I almost failed graduating because of procrastination so I was in kinesiology and we had these activity components to uh, to what we were doing and I decided to skip all of my swimming classes because I didn't want to get out of bed like literally that was my reason I don't want to get out of bed and go into the cold water okay so I'm like hey maybe they won't notice 20 hours of swimming no big deal and a week before I graduate I get this letter saying hey you're gonna you're about to fill graduation because you're missing all these hours I'm like oh my god so I had to make up 20 hours of swimming in one week between so it was twice a day aquafit in the morning with seven year old ladies and then swim training like hundreds of laps in the afternoon and I listen like for me, I'm like two laps and I'm done. So I had to do that. And then I had to write a 20 page paper on procrastination. So anyways, I kind of know why we do stuff and why we don't do stuff and whatever. Anyways, so all of this has led to me figuring out how do I, first and foremost, identify why I don't want to do stuff, right? And two is being okay with some of that because listen, there's stuff that we don't want to do, not necessarily because it's Um, not sexy, but because it's not in our unique ability. It's not in our DNA to do that stuff. And this is where you want to figure out how you can surround yourself with a team of people who can do a lot of that stuff for you, right? So when you look at output, okay, there's a very big difference between activity and output. If you're working for a chunk of time, you have to, the, the, the finish line for that amount of time needs to be the output, not the activity. So don't say I'm going to work for two hours on emails, for instance. Say I'm going to work for two hours and by the end of two hours, I will have written five emails. Like you've got a very definitive end point. It's either it happened or it didn't. And if you start to become results focused as opposed to activity focused, what that's going to help you do is it helps you move away from the grind and hustle and being the workaholic to the resultsaholic, where you don't need to work 40 hours a day because number one, there's not 40 hours in a day. Um, And second, it helps you identify what is most important. So with that said, my number one productivity hack, which is, by the way, nothing you haven't heard before, 
It's getting up really early and doing the one most important thing first thing in the morning. Now, am I perfect? No. Are there days where I start to get distracted and get into Gmail and Facebook? Sure. How I rectify that is I use a, uh, an app on my Mac called Self Control. And what it does, and if I remember, this is a note to myself, and sometimes I shoot these episodes for myself more than for you. This is a reminder, Yuri, to set self control the night before so that it blocks all of those websites for whatever length of time up until the next day or beyond. So I only have access to what I need, which is like Google Docs, if, if anything, right? So I have no access to Gmail, no access to Facebook. So when I get up in the morning and I do my most important work, it's all proactive, not reactive. It's all important stuff, not answering emails and responding to other people's priorities. So how this kind of, how, and I'll give you another example of how this shows up. So a lot of people have always been fascinated by the fact that I wrote three published books, a combined, I don't know, 950 pages perhaps in the space of five months. Now, not five months together, but spaced out over the three years. I did one book in two months, another book in two months, etc. And I said, like, listen, like, I've, I've never been of the belief that you have to put your business on hold, escape to the woods, rent a cabin, and write for three months like a hermit. I think that's just ridiculous. I mean, everyone has their own process, but for me, I'm like, I can't, nor do I want to do that. Number one, I have a family, so I can't just disappear. Uh, number two, I've got a business to run, and you can't like compromise the business just because you have a book to write. Sadly, a lot of people do. Okay, so here's here's what I said. I said I'm going to write the book, um, but it's going to have zero impact on my business in terms of my energy into that. And so all I did was I woke up every day at 5 a.m. and I wrote for two hours every single day, Monday through Sunday, Monday through Sunday, Monday through Sunday until the books were done. That's it. That's that's how you get it done, right? That's how you move big rocks is you do them first thing in the morning. Brian Tracy has a book called Eat That Frog, which essentially says the thing you don't want to do is probably the most important thing for you to do and you need to do that first thing in the morning. And if you're like me, which is a human whose willpower is less strong than your environment, then you have to use things like self-control to block your ability to log into Gmail or Facebook or anything else. It's giving your phone to your spouse and having them hide it so you can't have access to that until you have a predetermined time to do so. It's doing those things where you set up your environment to confine you to only do what you need to do. For me, the only thing that matters in my business is communication. I'm really the chief communication officer. So anything like this, no one else can do. No one else, I can't delegate what I'm doing here. This is very important for me to do because the more I can spread this message, the more I can get into your ears, the more that's gonna help you and you know eventually us. Me writing something, right? Whether it's an ad or some type of process or a piece for our team or whatever it is, that's an important thing for me to do. If I'm gonna do something to improve our sales process or our marketing, that's what's important to do. Responding to my clients, uh, very important, but it's not the most important thing for me to do first thing in the morning. I will block out a time. I could literally be on the toilet for 10 minutes with my phone and maybe I'll answer some client questions at that point, right? But doing that stuff where you're reacting to other people's stuff, that is not the most, I don't care, even if you're in customer service, it is not the most important thing for you to do. Every single day, the most important thing for you to do is something that requires zero reaction. So you're not responding to someone else, you are creating. You're not consuming, you are creating. That's the most important thing for you to do. And there might be a couple different things there, right? There might be, you know, maybe it's writing a Facebook, you know, a couple Facebook ads. Maybe it's creating content for your program. That's the most important thing for you to do. If it's regarding selling and marketing and, and learning that stuff, that's the most important thing for you to do. And you need to do it every single day, first thing in the morning until it's obviously complete and then you can move on to the next thing. So what I do um, every single morning, I mean, obviously there's obviously exceptions, but for the most part, every single morning, I write one ad. 
And at some point, I probably won't do that because you know we'll have other people do that. But for now, it's what I do because it's one of the single most important pieces of our business. If I write a really good ad that crushes it on Facebook, that is a very good use of my time. I write the ad once, and now Facebook amplifies that forever until it no longer works. But how many ads do I write that crush it? 10%, right? We'll launch 50 ads, eh, two of them, three of them might work. Does that mean Facebook advertising doesn't work? No, dude, it means you go back to the drawing board and you think of new angles, new hooks, new ways of introducing this concept. You guys, like that's what it is, okay? Success is doing the boring things over and over again consistently. People who don't succeed are those who do that for a few days and then they jump onto something else. Um, we had a perspective, so we were, we're doing a pilot program this month and uh, we're testing this out in terms of seeing if it's something we wanna continue doing. So far it's been awesome. And we had uh, someone in our tribe who said, like, I need to do this, but I need to figure out how I can make the time because I'm juggling three businesses and some other stuff. And those types of responses to me indicate that this person really doesn't know what they're doing because they have, no one should be juggling three businesses. You need to be zero focused or sorry, um, singular focused singularly focused on one business. And you need to drive that business as deep as you can possibly drive it for as long as you can possibly drive it before ever having another idea about jumping ship. If you're like me and you're a super creative person, which you probably are for the entrepreneur, you need to find ways to be creative within your existing business and that doesn't mean launching new products, launching new funnels, launching all sorts of new nonsense. It's about being creative within the confines of, let's say, how do we deliver a better experience? How do we deliver better results for our clients? So instead of me saying, hey, let's do this new marketing thing or let's change our business model, it's no. It's like, how do we be more creative? How do we innovate? How do we better help our clients? And using the delivery side of the attract, convert, deliver, Right? using the delivery as where the creativity comes in. And also looking at opportunities to improve conversions from leads, etc., stuff like that. But it's very dangerous when you start playing with, oh, I've got this thing going on and that thing going on and this thing going on and I'm gonna try this, oh, this is kind of working, well, you know, whatever. Um, I had a, a meeting with uh, one of my first clients, Amanda Tress, who, runs uh, the Fast Rate of Fat Loss, which is a friggin' monster company now. And, you know, she was saying, like, you know, she is at a point where she's looking to pivot and maybe try something else. And I think she's at a point now after doing about $50 million where, okay, cool, maybe try something else if you want to. But when we first started working together, her big challenge was that she had an agency and she had the faster way. And I told her, I'm like, listen, you cannot do both. You cannot do both. You have to choose one. And... There's a couple different ways we can kind of determine which one is, you know, is going to make the most amount of sense, but you can't juggle two balls at the same time and get the same output from both. And that's, you know, I mentioned this in a previous episode. That's one of the reasons why we let a couple of our team members go, because you know, not all not all of our coaches are full time with us because they don't have to be. If someone's a copy coach and they're doing five or ten hours a week with us, they might have their own business. But the challenge becomes when they're focused on their business more than ours and then we're potentially losing clients because they might have competing services, that becomes a big issue for us. And it's like, listen, I will give you the opportunity to grow as much as you possibly can within our company if you're helping our clients win and helping us drive our, our business forward. Um, but if you're more concerned in your business, that's totally cool. I respect that. Okay, I respect wanting to do your own thing. But we can't, we can't do both. And anyways, coming back to... <laughs> productivity is do the most important work in your business, which is create, not consuming, first thing in the morning. And I love mornings. I hate getting up early in the morning, but I love it. You know what I'm saying? It's the most productive time. It's when you're most, it's when you're most fresh. It's when there's, there's no one else is awake. There's no nonsense to deal with. It's like, boom, alone time with me and my thoughts and that's it. I get it done. And I think it's helpful if you go to bed the night before knowing exactly not what are the top 10 things to do the next day, but what's the one thing? What's the one thing that if you did first thing in the morning and it was done by, I don't know, eight o'clock, even if you did nothing for the rest of the day, that day would have been a total victory. And that one thing is important 
okay? Because if you start doing, well, what are the five things I'm gonna to get to tomorrow? It's very tough to prioritize them. But if you say to yourself, if I only do one thing, it becomes a bit easier. What's the one most important thing that if I only did that tomorrow and then I had to just do nothing, if I, if I, you know, if I did this one thing and then I was taken away by prisoner guards and they said, hand, you know, hands behind the back, you can't do any more work all day long. What's that one thing that would really move the needle in your business and do that? Now, if you're having a tough time figuring out what that is, then here's what you need. You need a coach. You need someone who has the experience and wisdom to show you what to do to help you move your business forward. You know, and if you like what we're all about, then listen, go to workwithyuri.com and let's have a conversation to see if you know, you're the right fit to work with us. And we'll tell you exactly what to do and we'll keep you accountable to doing that so you can get more clients and scale your coaching business. And here's a hint. It has nothing to do with writing blog posts. It has nothing to do with creating beautiful images for, on Canva for social, social media. It has nothing to do with what most people are telling you to do to build your business online or use the internet to get more business. Um, a lot of that stuff, most of that stuff is a complete crock of you know what, and it's a massive waste of time and your potential. So if you wanna you know, do what works and do what matters, then you need guidance. And I've said this before, and I'm not trying to be arrogant about this, but there are not many people, there are very few business coaches who have been in business for 14 or more years, who've generated tens of millions of dollars, who've made a lot of mistakes, who've learned from those mistakes, who have the wisdom and experience that I have. And that means I kind of know what to do and I kind of know what not to do. And listen, that's a very big difference between someone who had a couple good months and now they think they figured it out. And I'm not saying that, you know, maybe they don't have some good stuff, but you know, it's like, would you like to jump on a, go into an airplane with a captain that has 15,000 flying hours or the person who just came out of flight school, who's, you know, really good in terms of their test grades and stuff. And they've put in maybe a hundred hours of flying. The answer is obvious, right? So the reality is you get what you pay for and don't look for the cheapest option because the cheapest option at the end of the day is the most expensive. And if you want to work with the best, I, I think really, I think most people want the best. Like no one wants to get the mediocre solution or the worst solution, but you have to be willing to step into that and understand that if you want the best results, you have to work with the best and don't look at, you know, nickel and diming things. You know, as my friend uh, Vince says, like don't trip over pennies or don't trip over dollars in search of pennies or something like that. Commit to working with the best because the more you pay, the more you pay attention. And the more you pay, the more I pay attention. Got that? The more you pay, the more I pay attention to your business. If you give me a hundred bucks, you're not gonna hear from me, I promise you. Um, but if you work with us at our you know, higher level programs, you'll hear from me quite a bit and you'll hear from my entire team. And we will make sure you do the work and you will get the results. So anyways, if you're ready to step up and you're ready for the guidance that you probably need, then go to workwithyuri.com, answer a few questions about your business, and let's have a conversation. See if there's a good fit. And if there is, awesome. If not, totally cool. No hard feelings. At least you'll part with some really good clarity about what you can do in your business. Anyways, that's all for today. For today. That's my number one productivity hack. And I hope this has made sense for you. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of the Health Printer Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, here's what I'd like you to do right now. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Health Printer Podcast on iTunes. And while you're there, leave us a rating or review. It helps us get in front of more people and change more lives. And if you're ready to start or scale your health or fitness coaching business and want to start getting in front of more people, working with them at a higher level without trading time for money, then I invite you to check out our free seven-figure health business blueprint training totally free right now and you can do so at healthpreneurgroup.com forward slash training. For now, thank you so much for joining us. Continue to be great, do great, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.